I'm Alan Griffiths. I've lived in Mountain Ash for a number of years. I'm a retired head teacher. I was head at Penn Island Primary from 1983 to 2004. We've run as fan in fancy dress, right? We've run as Disney characters or a Viking boat, Scooby-Doo, Fireman Sam, and I usually build some kind of machine uh, a vehicle. And one of the neighbours said, I don't need to make anything this year. You must be awfully disappointed that uh, no Scarlands off. And I said, yes. And she said, what would it have been this year? And it would have been um, Peter Pan because Sally's got a Tinkerbell costume. <laughs> yeah, we do spend a little bit of money on the costumes, try and be as creative as possible. Um, I don't know. I have no idea how much my dad spends building it. I probably shouldn't say because my mum might be watching, but um, it's a very long project that does take a good few months keep saying, come see what I've done in the garage. And there's uh, normally some sort of contraption going on with flashing lights and things. I think it does help the town. The town's had its problems. I, I can remember going back to when I first started teaching here. All the mines were working. Everybody had a job. All the young men and women knew that they had a place and a family that was going to thrive in the town. Gradually, as the mines disappeared, it became harder and people had to travel out to the town to, to get jobs. There's a dramatic difference. If you've driven through the town today, you can see it needs a bit of help. Um, it is a small town, but it's a huge event. I mean, it attracts thousands of people into the town and we just wanted to make it fun, really. Um, people look out for us coming round. We high five all the kids as we run round in costumes and they're just waiting to see what we do each year, really. Yeah, there's a lot less shops in the town these days. Um, town centres have changed dramatically. People go out to town to shop or into the big cities and Mountain Ash just needs that something really to keep people attracted to it. I think North Scarland does help. It brings people to the town to see the community working together. The council and the support and the sponsors for the event really want to make this event a success so that everybody can leave Mountain Ash saying, I enjoy that, that was a good night. Lynn Thomas, 43, a welder fabricator. Good luck. <laughs> yeah, welcome to my world, boys. <laughs> 2020 for us has been adventurous. I think for most people, it's been something different. It's thrown all sorts of challenges, but you know, like other people, we've, we've had to get on with it. <laughs> I'm currently in this caravan due to COVID. Uh, my daughter, Nancy, has cystic fibrosis. Uh, seeing that I have to earn a living and, and pay for the bills, uh, I had to go to work and I was too concerned that it's quite hard to social distance in, in the environment and the home life that we have. So caravan was a safe option for me to keep everybody safe. We've known that Nancy's had cystic fibrosis uh, since she had the heel prick at three weeks. So we'd have known soon after that then that she was uh, uh, suffering with the disease. Yeah, having, you know, such news when your new parents is, you know, not what you expect. Um, and it, you know, it changed the course of parenting and of our lives, but you've got to dust yourself off and, and get on with it. When, you know, we had the diagnosis and as hard as that is to digest at that time, uh, a few weeks later, a friend of ours was given advice by a doctor of their son. And the advice was quite simple. You run them and you run the legs of them. And when they stop and they struggle, you pick them up and you just run them again. And that's basically, you know, that should be in on top of the door, really, when it comes to city fibrosis. You do as much as you can and then you keep going. And that's what works, you know. When we started our running journey, obviously the running journey was with Nancy in a buggy. So we spent years with Nancy in a buggy, you know, so she could get used to those environments and make it a part of her life. And when she'd done her first run, uh, the family run which she'd done, we were gobsmacked and amazed that she went round, she didn't stop, she had the drive and to us it meant that 
the years leading up to that to make her you know familiar with those environments worked because she enjoyed doing it and now she enjoys doing all of those activities and we'd like to believe that you know because she's been so familiar with those environments that's why she's good but for us yeah and even now you know the achievements that she does now when it comes to physical exercise and activity yeah you know we, we bow gracefully to her every time Nancy doesn't bow well to not being able to do something or being told not being able to do something. In fact, being parents of Nancy can be challenging at times because of that attitude. But it's the attitude that she needs to have to, to grow into looking after herself, you know, because being told not being able to do something and fighting against that is, is Nancy through and through. <laughs> Thomas, I'm nine and I'm from Lantwick Major. Uh, me? Okay. Let's do take one. <laughs> Doing lots of exercise helps um, clear the mucus in my lungs. So I do running, I do gymnastics, I do trampolining, um, I did do dance. I tried out for the athletics club and said I decided to do dance. So all sports related things really help um, clear the mucus in my lungs. Um, there are some sessions that are really hard and I do them because it helps my lungs. There are some sessions that are really fun and I do it because of my lungs as well. But overall I do it because of my lungs and it's really fun because I get to see more friends whereas if I didn't do any of this I would be really poorly and I would only see school friends. I might not even be, go be going to school. So doing all of this really helps. My favourite thing to do with my dad is um, play games and run with him. But obviously I can't do any running at the moment. I used to before he went to work uh, doing, during the lockdown. Um, but now he's going to work and um, I'm going to gym. But I've stopped a week early now. So whenever the days he was off I was in training so we can't fit it in all the time now so I just don't get to run with him anymore. So I've never heard of Ross Gallo. I think Dad might have run it once or twice um, but yeah I've always wanted to run it. What? Run boy, run. The command echoed across the hillside above the nearest town of Mountain Ash. Centuries later, the people of that town would still fondly remember this young boy, the one they affectionately called Gitto. Griffith Morgan was born in Cloncarlin, deep in the heart of the South Wales Valleys in 1700. He went on to live with his parents at Nithbran Farm, romantically nestling on the mountainside on the outskirts of Porth in the parish of Llanwa North. Hundreds of years later, San Juan North was to proudly become the spiritual home of the world famous Nos Galan Road Races. Run boy, run. Oh, he was the, yes, of course I know. He was the, he meant to be the fastest. Yes, see, that, that was it. Was it the fastest man in Wales? Was it something like that? Was that the... All the stories have grown about his speed, but he genuinely was a superb runner by any standards, even by today's standards. I think the current generation could learn from the Gitto story that people from the valleys can achieve things, not to give up, to just keep on going and keep on trying. And you may be from a small town, but it doesn't matter, you can achieve big things. Me and Mum did do some research yesterday that he could run, I can't, I've forgotten where the place was, but he could run somewhere and be back before his mother's kettle had boiled on a fire, and that he could race up to bed before the candle he'd blown out and fully blown out <laughs> so i thought it was pretty cool he must be a really fast man <laughs> yeah if i knew more about ghetto i i would have done lots more um he's very fast he was very fast absolutely believe that you know when it comes to uh, aspirational stories like himself and there's you know there's so many others when it comes to fitness and exercise i'm you know before nancy but most definitely after Nancy, 
it's the number one thing for me in school and you know your children need to be f physical active you know they, they need to have these things it's said by a few people bernard that you might have yourself added to the legend just a little bit i think i might have yes um i've certainly can and i've embellished them shall we say that i don't think i've added anything very much because the story is obviously basically true otherwise i don't think it would have lasted two centuries we congregated here today uh, on the occasion of the 1969 North Gallan Road Races held in nearby Mountain Ash to celebrate the life and sad death of this hero of Wales, Gitto Neath Brown. Well, you can never be certain how true legends are, of course, but I'm going to say something that's probably quite contrary to what a historian should be saying but I don't think it really matters it's just just how people view that legend is what's important and certainly the legend has brought about these races and brought the local area I suppose to the attention of the world and surely that's the important thing you know it'd be a travesty for these people to work so hard to get this up and running over the years and to make it such a big thing to to lose it over one year of 2020 which has been diabolical through and through my reason for running no scala this year will be the same as for me running any run any time of the year and that will be to support uh, nancy team running with nancy and cystic fibrosis I think it's going to be tough since I haven't run in so long, but I have been staying exercising, so it should be okay, especially with my dad. Just being able to have my dad there and not doing it on my own, so he's going to be there and that's going to be good, that's going to be nice. If there's one thing I'd say to inspire the runners, it would be simply to think of Gitto. He was a simple working class man who had his troubles like the rest of us. But when things got too much, or the world seemed against him, he put his best foot forward and carried on anyway. That's what I'd say to our modern runners. Just put your best foot forward, and thanks to you, the legend will live on. Breaking news. Wales will bring lockdown measures forward, plunging the country into the highest level of isolation from midnight tonight. Just something so special that we need to keep it alive. It will help the town, it will help the valley get the right sort of publicity. I just remember standing on the side of the road cheering and just seeing all the runners run through midnight. It was the highlight of our year, it always has been. You run them and you run the legs of them and when they stop and you struggle, you pick them up and you just run them again. I think it's going to be tough since I haven't run in so long but I have been staying exercising so it should be okay, especially with my dad. <laughs> Hi, Dad. Hi, Sal. Looking good. Very Christmas. And you? Yeah. Yeah, I Mrs. Claus this year. <laughs> How do you feel when you find out our little race was cancelled? Oh, I could see it coming because that's the way things were working out. But it's just a very disappointing end to a very disappointing year. And we just got to get on with it. Yeah. One thing after another. Yeah, were you looking forward to running? Yeah, definitely, yeah. I still want to do it. Um, I want to get the medal and the T-shirt. So what's next? Do you think the legend will live on after this year? Oh, definitely. It's too big now. 2,600 people signed up for a virtual race. That's incredible. Yeah, there's definitely room for Nancy to join us next year. There's always some extra lot spies or some fairies we can throw into Peter Pan. And I'm sure Nancy will have a great time with us. Hi, Nance. You OK? Hi. Yeah, you? Yeah, not bad. So this is the first time we've had a chat since uh, learning that Norse Gallen has been cancelled. How do you feel about it? I wanted to do it. It would have been my first time doing it, but um, we still did it. We, uh, we did a virtual run today. Oh, How long do you think you'll be staying in the caravan now? I don't know. Who knows? Just taking a day, day at a time, really, isn't it? See what happens. Yeah. So after what you've learned so far, who would you say is your favourite runner? Gito and Mo Farah. <laughs> and seeing that the Christmas we've had and, you know, 
New Year's, et cetera, going to happen. What would you like to do next New Year's? To be together again and to run the race. I think by talking about our family's love for the North Gallen and by doing this documentary and preparing for the race that we weren't actually able to do, um, we've learned that it's never really been about the fancy dress or the contraptions or the fuss. It's just spend more time with family, really. We just really missed out on that this year. I think it would be very proud. It's, uh, it's just part of our heritage, locally, it's part of Welsh heritage. Uh, yeah, thank you, Gitto. Thank you, Gitto. Thank you, Gitto, for inspiring us as a family to run again. They don't come to live in style at five star hotels, for most will sleep in miners' parlours. They don't come to fiddle expenses because there are no expenses for fiddle. They come because a tiny Welsh town plays host like the Rothschild because there's an affinity here beneath a New Year's sky. They come, in the end, because of a Welshman named Gitter, Griffith Morgan, who just may or may not have been the greatest runner in history.